In this lecture, we're going to go over roles and features on Windows Server 2019. Roles and features are a very important part of any Windows Server, and that includes Windows Server 2019. Roles and features are really what makes a server a server. So let's start by going over the difference between a role and a feature. A, a role is typically something that you install, and it's the main purpose of a server. IS, for example, is a role because when you build an IS server, it really should be only an IIS, IIS server. If you're not aware, IIS is Microsoft's web server software. So it's basically what hosts websites running on Microsoft servers. Where feature is sometimes a specific aspect of a role or a totally separate application altogether. So going back to the IIS example, default documents is a feature of the IIS role, but it is still a feature. Features can also be tools that get installed with roles. Another example is when you install the Hyper-V role, it will automatically install the Hyper-V management tools, which show as a feature. This is an example of where you can install the Hyper-V management tools without installing the Hyper-V role. So I hope you kind of see where that's going. It's not too confusing. You can install the Hyper-V management tools by themselves without installing the role, but they get installed automatically if you install the role. So let's go ahead and install the IIS role on our Windows Server 2019. And first, we're going to start by using Server Manager, which again, very conveniently pops up when we log in. And we're going to do this first by clicking on Manager, Manage, and then Add Roles and Features. And it's going to give us this little pop-up saying, before you begin, it's going to tell me a little bit about this wizard and how to use it. I typically click the skip this page by default because I don't need to continually see this. So we'll go ahead and click next. And we're going to choose role-based or feature-based installation because that's what we're doing. And then click next. This window is a great one to look at. And when Microsoft implemented this version, really, of Server Manager in Windows 2012 R2, it became possible to start installing roles and features on servers that are not the one you're currently on. You can even install this Server Manager program on your local Windows 10 machine and install roles and features remotely. This really kind of escalated the being able to remotely control stuff and remotely do stuff. You could actually push out roles to, say, 10 servers all at once from one management interface, and it really saves a whole lot of time. Our server is the only one in our list here, so we're just going to choose that, and we're going to go ahead and click Next. Now, this window gives us a list of all the roles that we can install on our server. So we're going to just scroll on down here, and we're going to choose Web Server IIS. And you'll see we're immediately prompted for the features, some of the features, that are required to install along with this role. And we can see that it's actually the IIS Management Console. So we're going to go ahead and say, yes, we want to install this role. We'll add this feature. Then we can go ahead and click Next. And we're going to see all the features that we can install. Now, these are not role-specific features or role-specific services, but they are other features we could install. We're not going to add any of them at this time, so we'll go ahead and click Next. And now we're going to get into the actual web server part. So now we're seeing this window talking about web server role, which is IIS. And then if we click Next, we see all the role services or other features that are installed with the IIS role. And we can turn these on or turn them off, and you can kind of see what's already selected and what options we have. We're going to leave everything at default right now, and we're going to go ahead and just click Next. Now, at the last window is our confirmation. It's going to tell us everything that's going to get installed, and if we're happy with that, we can go ahead and just click Install and let it go. Now, one of the great things is you can go ahead and close this window at any time. It's not a big deal. It's going to continue to go on in the background. And the great thing, once again, about my video editing that I love is we don't have to wait for this to complete through the beauty of it. We'll just speed up this video and we're going to be done and IS web server is now installed. One of the great things about Windows Server is we can automate this entire process using PowerShell. So let's install a feature using PowerShell. The first thing, let's go ahead and open PowerShell. And if you're not familiar, PowerShell is basically a command prompt 
that Windows developed to kind of combat with Bash. Uh, Linux Bash is incredibly powerful, and PowerShell is as well. Microsoft, everything they write at this point can typically be done via PowerShell, and that allows you to pretty much automate everything. It allows you to automate anything you really want, and creating these types of installs is one of them. So the first thing, now that we've launched PowerShell, we're going to do an import module, and that module is going to be server manager. And this is basically importing the PowerShell commands that we're going to need to install our feature. And then we can do a get windows and we tab complete feature and it's going to give us a list of every possible feature which is great we can literally if we don't know exactly what we want to install we can scroll through this list and find what we want to install we are going to install the telnet client right here pretty easily done and to do that we're going to use the command add windows feature telnet client that simple now you can see the bar at the top that starts to progress as it actually does the install that we need, very similar to the bar we saw when we were installing the IIS service. So this is going to just run on through pretty quickly since it's just a Telnet client. That's all it is, and once it's done, we'll be able to actually test and confirm that Telnet is installed. And to test that Telnet install, we'll just simply run Telnet. Pretty simple. And you can see we're now in the Microsoft Telnet client. And we're just going to go ahead and type quit to leave Telnet client. And we're back to our PowerShell command prompt. Pretty simple. In the next lecture, we're going to sum up the course and talk about some next steps that you can take.